evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist and worked as a research engineer in telecommunications. And I'd like to speak to you about the Democratic uh, primary. Obviously, you can see I am a Bernie partisan, but I'm providing a factual uh, delivery. Um, Today, Bernie Sanders was tied for first place in the California primary. Uh, this is the results of this particular primary, and this is the tale of two cities. So when we actually look what's actually going on, we see some massive strengthening for Bernie. Another factor is that a Cosmopolitan magazine came out and had conducted a poll after the third debate and found that uh, Bernie led their poll um, at 32%. Um, but the national polls uh, would tend to have you have a different uh, view. And many uh, Bernie Sanders partisans say that is because they tend to reach out to older people and that uh, looking at people 45 and under, he consistently is beating the other candidates. So if you look at the, uh, the national poll narrative here, uh, let's go to uh, national. And uh, here we see that uh, in the most recent poll, Sanders is at 14%. And if we look at the overall trend lines since Biden announced, which is where he shot up to 41.4, we see Biden tending down overall. Uh, Bernie is staying sort of in the uh, 15 to 20 percent range right now at 16.3. Warren, uh, since uh, this uh, period, uh, so let's go down a little bit so you can see the actual uh, dates here. Uh, so we see Warren started to really move up around uh, June. Uh, here she's at 11 and gradually uh, climbing. So that's what you would draw, but What's really going on in terms of how this contest is going to play out is a little bit different. First of all, you have to look at each individual poll. And so here we have uh, USA Today, Bernie weakened because I'm doing these from oldest to newest. But overall, the tendency has been that Bernie goes up in polls. Uh, uh, let's see here. So here we have IBD, he went from 12. He stayed at 12, okay. Harvard Harris, he stayed. Here, he actually dipped. I don't have the two Quinnipiac polls. CNN, he went up two points. Here he went down four. Here he went up two points on The Economist. So you can go through all of these. Um, but the way this contest plays out is through a series of uh, primaries, the first of which is in Iowa on March the 3rd, where 1% of the delegates will be accumulated. There's 4,500 total delegates, including the superdelegates. Superdelegates don't get to vote on the first round, so you need about 1,950 delegates to get a clear majority in the first round, avoid triggering the superdelegates, that are mainly going to go with the establishment. Uh, and for me, climate change is a life and death matter. And we, it's simply absolutely dangerous to have anyone who's not 100% dedicated to moving us to renewable energy rapidly. However, if we look here at this primary schedule, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, Bernie Sanders ha is tied for first or in first in three of those four states. In Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, Nevada sorry, Bernie is either tied for first or in first place in some of the recent polling. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so in the state of Iowa, the most recent poll has, uh, let's see here, all Iowa, there we go. Sanders was at a, in a commanding, uh, well, second place, 26%, uh, uh, which is still very good news for him. Uh, compared to the previous poll, where he was only at 19%. So in Iowa, he is uh, definitely highly competitive in the most recent poll at 26%. He, uh, he's not tied for first, but he's neck and neck. In New Hampshire, we have the most recent poll coming in with Bernie at 29%. 
head and shoulders above the rest of the field. Uh, and competitive in the YouGov here, 26, 25, and 27. He's is statistically tied. Um, then we come to Nevada. And Nevada, uh, we can see that it's not entirely a fluke that Bernie's in the 20s. It is only one poll in terms of his uh, actually being in the lead, but he is uh, clearly in the lead here, just as he was in the lead in the most recent New Hampshire poll. Um, and as I said, he's tied for first in California. He's done well in some Colorado polling. Let's take a quick look and see if we can get Colorado. Um, no. Uh, there are polls for Colorado for Sanders, but unfortunately, I can't retrieve them right now. And they have shown him doing uh, fairly well. Maine as well. Um, now, as, and then there are sometimes national polls that break down by state. So why does he do better in these early states, in the uh, specific state polling than the general polling? And one factor may be that the sampling population is deeper when you're doing just one state. Uh, when you do national poll, you might only have two or five respondents per state on average, whereas a state poll, clearly, you're going to hopefully have at least 100 people from that state. Uh, so maybe it reaches more uh, deeper into society. Um, now, the uh, uh, so the point being that uh, he should head into Super Tuesday with potentially at least two and possibly three victories. Um, the uh, People will not have mailed their ballots in by Iowa. Hopefully he wins there. Um, and then certainly uh, most of them still won't have mailed them in almost a month prior in at New Hampshire, which I'm almost certain he'll win. Uh, and then we'll still have a you know, huge decisive effect with uh, Nevada. Now, South Carolina, we're not going to win unless we are a very fortunate. But even in South Carolina, we have our most recent poll uh, with Sanders at 18 here, uh, CBS. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's, he, uh, but Warren has strengthened from the last CBS poll. Um, Harris, uh, where did Harris's support bleed over to? Possibly a little bit to Sanders, a little bit to Warren. Um, five, four, three, two. Yeah, and then perhaps uh, a fair amount to Biden. Uh, Harris may have gone over to, yeah. So to conclude, um, when we actually get to the convention, I created a simulation here with some guesstimates about how they would do Biden-Sanders um, in percentages of the vote, uh, Warren. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, and there are a few uh, uh, clear errors in my just creating a statistical uh, pattern of the data, but uh, what I come up with here, obviously Warren's not going to get 40 in Georgia. Uh, I was allocating her 90% of the remainder of whatever wasn't obtained by Biden or Sanders. Uh, and, you know, I may have put Biden's numbers a tad too low. Um, um, But I do think Sanders will be able to hit these kind of numbers as things presume because of the initial uh, momentum of winning in two or three of the states and then having several of his strong states on Super Tuesday. Um, so I think he's going to get a lot of momentum. And at any rate, I've got him often hitting 45% uh, in this uh, guesstimate. So we end up on the first round with Bernie at... 1,574 out of the roughly 3,800 delegates before the superdelegates kick in. Uh, and then uh, Biden uh, getting uh, 852 and Warren 989. In this case, I had a pretty high remainder number, so we'll deal with that in a minute. So this ends up with this sort of a um, predicted outcome. Um, so can Bernie win in a situation like that? Um, now, uh, that is a good question. <clears throat> um, 
And what we find is that on the second round, if we distribute the superdelegates, 75% to Biden, 15% to Warren, 10% to Bernie, because they're made up of Democratic Party elected and appointed officials, some of which will go with Bernie, especially if he has the majority of the vote to begin with. This could understate superdelegate support massively. Um, but I don't have much hope for them because they're basically machine people who will follow Tom Perez, uh, but we can hope. Uh, then I allocate the minor uh, party, I mean the minor candidates that are able to get some delegates, and I allocate them largely for Joe Biden, uh, then followed by Warren, and then followed by Bernie, because they're Buttigieg, Harris people. Uh, uh, some of these people are going to tend to go to the more establishment or center candidate in this election. We've got Joe basically on the right, Warren in the center, Bernie on the left. Uh, so that ends up with this uh, dilution of Ber Bernie's vote, down to 38% in this particular scenario. And Joe swelling from 22 to 34 with the superdelegates and potentially unbound delegates on the second round uh, voting from the minor party, uh, from the minor candidates who now are concentrating on these three. So in this case, it didn't work to get Joe over the top in the second round. So in the third round, they try Warren instead, and then it does work at 52.94. So if my simulation is correct, Bernie's going to have to win around 43, 44% of the delegates in order to uh, win at the convention. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.